You there, Rebecca? Bad reception. Can you hear me? Well, glad to see that's working. Guess I'll try you back when I'm topside. Copy now. Loud and clear. What's the plan? According to our intel, the power source is being worn as a bracelet by some tycoon's trophy wife. We're working on pinpointing her location, Sir, but she's most likely inside a VIP booth on the stadium's upper level. I'll update you when I know more. Now to find a ticket. We don't have time to play nice. Steal someone else's. Bit of a dick move, don't you think? Well, I guess you could try and get that security favor. instead. Billieti, por favor. Alguém chama segurança! That doesn't look like normal security. Because it isn't. Those are Abstergo agents. Cross is probably here too. You need to be careful. Your target's definitely in the VIP area. The entrance is at the end of this concourse. That's your voice. Don't let them see you. doesn't look like normal security. Because it isn't. Those are Abstergo agents. Cross is probably here too. You need to be careful. Você viu esse homem? Chame a segurança imediatamente, Silvi. Quick, Desmond! Hide! Blend! Or do something! Great. They've set up a checkpoint. Segurança! Segurança! O que é isso? Aquele cara tá 
That doesn't look like normal security. Because it isn't. Those are Abstergo agents. Cross is probably here too. You need to be careful. Você viu esse homem? Chame a segurança imediatamente, se eu vi. Great. They've set up a checkpoint. Segurança! O que é isso? If you're worried about being spotted, there's probably a way around security. Get close to the crowd and you should be okay. Or look for a way around it. Seriously, what is the deal with stadiums and piss troughs? It's disgusting. And who thought they were a good idea? Troughs are time and cost efficient. I don't even see a stall in here. Uh, what if I have to take a dump? Yeah, please just mute the microphone if you do. Looks like I'm close. Shit! Another checkpoint. You're gonna have to find another way around. Security's too tight here. Se não me deixar entrar, vou perder o emprego. Temos que verificar sua identidade. Não tenho nada. Como assim? Olha, aconteceu. Só isso. A gente não queria que acontecesse. Só aconteceu. Sinto muito. Sente muito. Ela é minha irmã, cara. A publicação. Other side. Quebrou as costas trabalhando 80 horas por semana para tirar 100 pratas. E olha, agora tenho que ficar aqui para ser insultado por um brutamonte de terno.
We can get back to Connor whenever you're ready, Desmond. Unless you want to plug in the power source first. Up to you. So, what's the latest? Learn anything interesting while you were exploring? They were working on some weird stuff towards the end. Trying to engineer new bodies and store their minds inside computers. Failure after failure. It must have been hard for them. I worry about it, too. I mean, they say there's something in here that'll help us, but what is it? Why is it locked up if it's exactly what we need? I don't know. Maybe it's dangerous? Maybe they wanted to make sure only you could reach it? That's the other question. What makes me so special? I guess we'll know once we open the door. Hey. I hope it's not uncomfortable for me to ask, but what happened with Lucy? I don't know. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said anything. No, it's fine. I really don't know. I was talking to my dad about it. It's, it's hard to say. I mean, Juno definitely took control, but I think I agreed to it on some level. I think I let her in. No. <laughs> That's not right. It, it wasn't her. Not exactly. It, it was more like a... a program. Does that sound weird? It, it showed me things. What'd you see? That if I didn't stop Lucy, Abstergo would get the apple, and we'd all be dead. I still don't understand why she turned on us. I'm sure she thought she was doing the right thing. I gotta get back to work. You might want to do the same. I can't believe it's taken me so long to ask, but... How's Mom? She's not... No, 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 no. Your mother is fine. We decided it was safer if we split up for this job. Always assuming the worst. <laughs> for good reason. Can I at least say hi to her? I'm sorry it's too risky. Maybe when we're done. Right. When we're done. Have... have we ever tried to make peace with the Templars? Throughout our history, there have been moments. Several, in fact. But... it's impossible. There are existential differences, insurmountable. If there were to be unity, it wouldn't be a truce so much as a submission. But knowing what's about to happen, wouldn't it make sense to try and talk to Vidic? Come to an arrangement, even if it's only temporary? We'd all be so busy watching our backs, nothing would get accomplished. <laughs> Imagine that. We're more productive at war. Well, have we ever tried sending in someone? Doing to them what they did to us with Lucy? Or Cross? We have, and it's never worked. We've sent people who were either too weak and found themselves turned, or too strong and were unable to carry out the charade. I just feel like we all want the same thing. We use the same words, but that's all they are, words. In the end, it all comes down to freedom. We seek it, they detest it. And so there's never an end to the fight. Not until one side is completely gone. Is that even possible? 
Probably not. Our two groups have existed in one form or another since... Well, since forever. But things can be better than they are. And that's something. Did you look for me, Dad? When I was gone? Every day. Come on. I mean it. Every night I'd look, searching for your name or variations of it, hoping you'd slip up. Abstergo only found you first because they had better access. A few more days and it would have been me. Well, I'm here now. And I'm glad. Do you think Lucy regretted what she was doing? I used to think I knew her well, but clearly that wasn't the case. So I really can't give you an honest answer. She seemed so sincere, though. Like she really wanted to make a difference. Yes, well, when I first met him, I thought the same thing about Cross. It just keeps happening over and over again. What does? Everything. Don't get weird on me, Desmond. No, it, it's fine. I'm fine. Don't worry. All right, then. You should think about getting back in the Animus. We've got to find that key. We should probably get back to Connor. Oh, I, unbelievable. What's up? Your politicians are constantly referencing the Founding Fathers and... Insisting they must have been in support of one thing or another, I have never seen such a blatant disregard for history. That's just typical political propaganda. It's also dishonest and delusional. How can anyone claim to know what these people wanted based off scraps of paper and wishful thinking? They're looking for intent. What these men envision for our country and its future. Idealistic and unlikely. I don't think most of your presidents and senators and judges care what the founders thought. They just want to know how they can bend old words to achieve modern goals. Who cares if they were deists or theists or wanted a central bank? Why do people need the validation? What should matter is what you, as an individual, believe and why you believe it. What, are we so insecure that we have to find 18th century letters to validate our beliefs? Oh, look, Mum, a dead man agreed with me. Maybe. If you transpose the letters in his shopping list, you can plainly see he was on my side. Jesus, Sean. It's a cynical way to look at it. Doesn't make it less true. I keep trying to understand how men like Washington and Jefferson could dedicate their lives to the pursuit of liberty and equality, yet have no problem owning slaves. It's hypocritical in the extreme, and your history books make only passing mention of the subject, as if, as if it were of little consequence. They had a war to win. A country's future to secure. How could they deal with all these issues at the same time? Spoken like a true apologist. We hear it today, too, that matters of civil rights and equality must wait. There are conflicts to settle, economies to salvage. What do any of these things matter if the people are not free and equal? All of them. I wish there was a way for us to share what we learn from the Animus with others. Imagine being able to accurately answer questions about the past or experience lost civilizations. But how would you cite it? We can't just reveal the machine's existence to the world. Why not? Desmond's right. It would be dangerous. And we still haven't found a way to manage the bleeding effect. Maybe when we're done saving the world, we can look into it. Even if we do manage to stave off the apocalypse, it's not like the Templars are simply going to disappear. I suspect our fight will continue long after this latest battle is finished. Oh, look at the time! Or doesn't time fly? Look, I think it's best we get you back in the Animus, hmm? What is a fact? Is it fixed? Immutable? Certain in its existence, and only awaiting discovery? Or might it be changed? Here we learned the answer, and thought that it might save us. They were used to command, to control, to own. 
but we soon discovered another use. When enough sat in thrall and were told to believe, their thoughts took on form. What was imagined became real. If a hundred minds could wish away a wall or create a tree, what might a thousand do? Ten thousand? More? Might we change the consensus and will the threat away? We resolved to send one into the sky where it might illuminate us all. Once placed, a sentence would be uttered. Make us safe. In this way, we would change the consensus. We would save the world. But it never came to be. We sent a dozen of them skyward, but there was no way to maintain control, to direct the beam, to enthrall the world, to speak the words. Though this was strange and dangerous, what we tried next was worse. Our first instinct was to travel back, to change the past, but we could not find a way. But forward, we could look forward, and so here we sought to see beyond ourselves, and know what was to come. First we wanted to learn if our work would succeed, but the answer was always the same. So we moved on to other things, but she remained, the one you call Minerva. In time, she too stopped looking, and instead began to speak. She called out across time, in the hopes that you might be saved. She hid messages where none might find them, save for you and those within this place. Fascinating. Tired of it. The cryptic warnings, the threats. Just tell us what you want! But they are. We saw the Neptune there. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. Imagine trying to explain all this to a two-year-old, to a grasshopper. When they said the will of the gods was unknowable, they meant it. Literally. I killed her, you know. I killed Lucy. It was the Apple, son. It was Juno. I saw what she was. What would happen if I let her live? I could have stopped myself. I mean, there was a force there. But I didn't have to. I chose to. Desmond. Lucy was going to betray us and take the Apple back to Abstergo. I saw the satellite launched. I saw them turn it on and then... It failed. Whatever's on the other side of that door, it benefits Juno. We need to be careful.
tell me today? I'm telling you, there's something down here. Don't be daft. I don't know, maybe they were sleeping or something and we woke them. Some kind of cryogenics or hibernation. I mean, how do we know what the hell they were doing down here? They were working on a bunch of different solutions, but nothing worked. Just went from one to the next and then, I don't know. They must have left at some point, after the end. I wonder what the world would be like if they'd succeeded. I'm more concerned about what it'll be like if we don't. Salvation. They found a way. Too late for them, but not for you. Sealed to protect it. Though now it bars your way. Find the key. The past will tell. Sorry, Desmond. A little busy right now. 